Hey everybody, today I'm going to talk with you about selective mutism. How do we diagnose it and what treatment options are out there? Now I put out a video about this quite a while ago and I actually got a lot of negative comments and hate about some missteps that I took in the video and things that I said that were incorrect. And I want to apologize wholeheartedly. I would never create a video or content that I thought would be harmful, hurtful, or in any way um, upsetting to any of you. My goal is actually to put out positive, helpful content. And so I'm here to kind of make amends and create another video that is correct. And I've done a lot more research and hopefully this is much more helpful. And I have since turned that video private. So if you go searching for it, you won't find it um, because I'm hoping this will replace it. And I hope that you'll forgive me. And that's the great thing about our community is that I do my best to research. You always are asking and challenging me to find new information about other disorders and issues and things that you're struggling with. And together we will make things better, right? So thank you for keeping me in line. Thank you for letting me know. And hopefully this sounds and feels much better to you. So to start off, selective mutism is a diagnosis. And as always, if I can get it off the table, I'm reading from my handy dandy DSM. Now, selective mutism has a set of criteria. The first being consistent failure to speak in specific social situations in which there's an expectation for speaking, like at school. Selective mutism usually presents itself before the age of five. So usually we've, we run into it and recognize that it's happening when they enter school because there's pressure to talk like, oh, the teacher called on me or, oh, I have to stand up and I have to tell kids about this or I have to present my project. And there are a lot of things that where we're pushed and there's pressure to talk and those with selective mutism will not be able to. The second is the disturbance interferes with educational or occupational achievement or with social communication. Now you can see why that would happen because if I can't talk in school or work and I can't express or show my project or talk to friends or talk to my teacher or my boss or coworkers, it's going to affect the way that we're able to function in those tasks. The third is the duration of the disturbance is at least one month not limited the first month of school. And they say that because school can be really anxiety provoking and we're starting a new school year and it can take us a little while to get adjusted, to feel okay, to know what our teacher's wanting and to feel like we can speak up. A lot of people are shy from the get go and selective mutism is not shyness, okay? Also selective mutism just so that you understand where it comes from is that it's an anxiety disorder. So that kind of tells you the root of where this difficulty speaking and inability to speak is coming from. It usually stems from a really intense uh, feeling of social anxiety or generalized anxiety. And so we'll get so anxious that we're unable to speak in school, at work, with friends, at home, etc. Now the next criteria, the fourth, is that the failure to speak is not attributable to a lack of knowledge of or comfort with the spoken language required in a social situation. In one of the articles I was reading, they talked about children coming from other countries. Let's say my native language is Mandarin and then I'm thrown into a school in Florida and I don't speak English that well and I'm really anxious about it already and it makes me nervous and I'm just not comfortable. So I don't know the language well enough to actually speak it. It is not, it cannot be attributed to that. That is not what selective mutism is. The last criteria is that the disturbance is not better explained by a communication disorder. It could be childhood onset fluent, fluency disorder or any other. I have some videos I'll actually link here where I talk with my friend, um, Catherine, who's a speech pathologist. And there are a lot of different things that can go along with reasons children don't speak. But that again is not selective mutism. Selective mutism comes from an intense internal anxiety, which leads us to feeling like we actually cannot speak. We'll want to, we'll have so much to say, and we literally physically cannot. Now, like I said, the onset of selective mutism is usually before the age of five or around the age of five. And a lot of the research that they've done shows that a majority of people do grow out of it. But from what I've heard from you and what I've been reading on other really not actually supported research studies, but that doesn't mean they're not valid, that some people don't and many don't. And some people have onset later in life. So like I said, the DSM is not the end all be all. Everyone's experience is going to be different. However, the majority, just meaning 50% or more, find that it usually starts at a very young age, uh, at the age of five or a little younger. So now we know what selective mutism is. It's an inability to speak due to intense internal anxiety. 
so we have it or our child has it, what are our treatment options? And know that there are a lot out there. I'm gonna offer up four to you today. However, you can do your own research, talk to your own um, speech pathologist, maybe someone at the school, maybe the therapist that your child or yourself has seen and ask for other options or referrals because there are always more options out there, but these are the four that they talk about the most frequently when we talk about treating this. Now the first is actually something that I don't know myself. I've never done it in my own private practice, but they talk about it like it's the golden rule for treatment of this and it's the best, it shows the best outcomes. And it is called SCAT or Social Communication Anxiety Treatment. And that would make sense. It sounds very specific. It sounds perfect for selective mutism. So if you can find someone who specializes in this, I would encourage you to give them a call. And what it really focuses on is addressing the answers to these three questions. The first is, why did they develop selective mutism? In many cases, they find that children, if it starts in, if the onset is in childhood, that there's usually a triggering event. Not always, but usually. And that could be parents got divorced, maybe they witnessed something traumatic. It could be a number of things. But there's a triggering event, and then they just completely lose the ability to speak. And so finding out what caused it can usually help us figure out how to help them. The second question is, why does it persist despite past treatment? If we've tried things, why is it still lingering? If we've had them at a speech pathologist or had them in therapy, how come it's still hanging around? And that can obviously show us what work still needs to be done. That would be, I could apply that to my patients with um, eating disorders. If we've already been in treatment, how come it's still around? What's still going on? Do we not really fix that root of the root and the reason that it exists? The answer is probably yes. And the third question that they work to answer is, what can be done at home, school, or in the real world to help them? And that could be anything from, do they have a really close friend that can help them, that they feel okay communicating with them to get their needs met in school? Maybe they have a teacher that they really like and feel comfortable with and they actually talk a little bit in that class because they, their anxiety is lowered. Maybe they can get that teacher all day long or we can increase the number of classes that they have with that teacher. There may be a lot we can do, especially through IEPs. I do those for clients all the time, going to schools, um, and working on different uh, education plans with the, uh, the child to make sure that we're getting them the help that they need. The second treatment option is psychodynamic therapy. And when it comes to children, that really means play therapy. And this can be really healing and helpful for uh, children who struggle with selective mutism because they can speak through play without actually having to use their voice. And this can often lead them to feeling more comfortable and more understood and maybe speaking a little bit with a the therapist over time. But at the very least, it gives them a way to communicate what they're feeling and thinking without having to say it. The third treatment option and the one that I think should be attached to every one of these options is family therapy. Because this happens most commonly in children, if we go right back into our family household and whatever chaotic or triggering event that happens is still happening there, it's gonna be really hard for us to keep fighting against it, using our tools. It's really difficult for children to essentially speak up, not just verbally, but even physically letting people know that they're upset. And if they've already struggled with that, we wanna make sure that we're working as a family to create a healthy, happy environment where they can work on lowering their anxiety, dealing with whatever caused it, and being able to finally feel comfortable and at ease enough to speak. And the fourth and final treatment option is behavioral therapy. And the way that this kind of works, and I, I'm on the fence about this, I do this a lot in my practice, but like I said, I don't specialize in selective mutism. But the way that behavioral therapy do, uh, works is that we, in a way, reward like positive behavior. So if they are speaking or they do express themselves in some way, we reward that behavior. It could be in golden stars on a board. It could be in treats or be, uh, you know benefits at home. Like, oh, I get to go out and walk the dog by myself, or I get to spend extra time on the computer, or whatever it may be, they use those to kind of help guide the child to doing more of the positive behavior. And like I said, I don't know how well this would work necessarily for selective mutism. The others sound better personally to me, but we have to find what works best for us and in our own scenario. So that's another treatment option. And the last thing that I'll mention is medication. I know this happens most commonly in children and a lot of us don't wanna put our children on medication and I totally hear you out on that. And that's why there's all those other options. And like I said, there's probably more out there. So do some research, find something that works for you. But if we're doing all of those things and it's still not getting better and we worry about um, how our child is feeling or we ourselves are struggling and we're feeling worse, Medication is an option. They always talk about SSRIs or SNRIs helping with anxiety. And since we know selective mutism is an anxiety disorder, 
there is some evidence to show that medication does help alleviate that and maybe get us to the level like we've talked about in other videos where the anxiety is low enough that we can start actually doing the work and challenging ourselves and feeling better. So that's some another thing to keep in mind. Again, I want to thank you all for letting me know when I've messed up and when I've misspoken and said something that wasn't correct. It's together, like we're working together, right, towards a healthy mind, a healthy body. And I want you to know I always hear you out, I always read your comments, and it really, really helps that we have a wonderful working community behind us. And it always helps to share videos. If you were upset by the last video, please share this video. If you feel it's correct, I've done as much research as I can, I'm doing the best I can, it would really help to share it on Facebook so that those out there who are struggling can hopefully get the treatment that they need and deserve. And if you wanna follow me on any other social medias, you can click down here. If you haven't subscribed, click up here, and I will see you next time.